All right, so this is bound to happen to you at least once or twice in your career. You've just taken an awesome pride shot, everything looks good, client is happy, but then you get this call. Oh my God, thank you so much for the pride shots. We love oh, yeah. them. Awesome. Yeah. But there's just one little thing. We accidentally sent you the wrong oh. product. Oh, yikes. So we were just wondering uh, no, 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 no. if you could maybe, uh, don't, don't you say it, just Photoshop it. Just Photoshop it, yeah. Yeah, so now we're gonna take a quick look at how you can fix this in post in about five minutes to save you and your client a bunch of headache and to just deliver the best possible product for your client. So without any further ado, let's jump into Photoshop and see how we can fix this photo. All right, now we're inside of Adobe Photoshop and it's these guys over here. One of those should be yellow like this lid over here. Um, it could be either one, but I think that I will choose this one back here just because, you know, we won't have any obstruction of this guy over here. Um, so first of all, we want to duplicate the layer. Um, you could see, you know, if you could change the yellows to greens, but as you can see, it only kind of degrades the picture. So what I want to do is I want to take a bit of a mask from this lid just to get the texture right. So we'll grab this layer over here and put it over this little fire fork. And we're going to increase it a bit just so it covers the entire fire fork. Now we're going to lower the opacity so we see what we're doing. And now we're just going to finally mask around the whole thing. Alright, so now we have a rough mask around just the fire fork. Um, we want to continue refining the mask by just using the brush tool, maybe at a lower opacity and a higher hardness, and just going around until it looks great. Alright, so right about here the masking looks kind of okay in this area. Uh, we will also need to mask out this little guy right here. Now this is just a long and tedious process that you really can't get away from when changing the colors of an object like, like we have here. So right about there the product and the color looks right about okay. I will choose strong lights that best represents the color for me in this case because we still get the logo through the old color while still having the new color overlaying it. But as you can see, it's a bit brighter than this right over here. So I'm gonna change the new ones to be a bit more orangey. Right about there maybe. All right, so this looks already kind of believable. Uh, the one thing I wanna change, as you can see here, it's really, really tiny, but we can see some leakage of the green pixels through the picture. So I more or less just want to go around this object one more time and this could be a rough mask and then I want to lower the green to zero so we don't get this greenish tint on the edges. So right about there I believe this is some spill that we don't want to have. All right so now this is looking pretty okay. Um, We've just removed the greens from underneath. As you can see, that kind of changed the tint of it a bit. So I will need to go back into the yellows of this layer and just make it a bit more yellowish. Right about over here. But one thing you will notice that we have lost in this process is the shadows from underneath here. So the easiest thing is to just create a new layer and do a rough mask around where the shadow should be and then just take a black brush a little bit bigger in size low in hardness and low in opacity and then just try to manually color back the shadows this part should be dark maybe like so more or less yes then we will go into the second part of this hollow bit 
and do the exact same procedure. Here is the final look with the shadows on the fire fork and off. As you can see, it makes a huge difference in believability uh, when you compare it to the green one over here. So that is an easy fix to believably change the color from green to yellow or whatever color you might have in your scenario and still having it look believable with the shadows and the lights and the textures coming through the objects. So these are the three quick fixes that I would recommend you try if you find yourself in a similar scenario where you have gotten a product in the wrong color but the, the client or the company or whoever it might be want to have the color change and still retain all the texture and all the labeling in the photo. And this could actually save a project if you were to happen to get the wrong color or anything like that. Alright, so that is all the fixes we were going to do in Photoshop for this session. Now this particular case was just a matter of switching colors of an object and I believe this is the most reasonable thing and question you could get asked in this scenario. You know, we've sent you the wrong color of the product, could you switch up the color? That is far more likely than the client saying, oh shit, we sent you the entire wrong product. That, that would be a, an enormous task to fix in post. So I believe that this is the most common request you could get within the, the field of retouching. The client asks you to emphasize the color more or to switch up the color entirely. And as you can see, in this particular case with a completely white background, it was really not that hard. It takes a bit of fiddle, you know, you need to make sure that you preserve the texture while still retaining the new color and, you know, still having all the shadows in the shot. Now this will take a bit of fiddling around and you can play around with it in Photoshop, but the most important thing is that you really look at the product, see what color do we need to replicate, what sort of texture is in the product in this particular product. It's a bio-based material, I, I believe it's made of wooden fibers, so it's really really important to the client in this case to preserve the texture of, of the product and of the color. So we need to overlay color while preserving texture and still retaining all the shadows, all that good stuff within the product so it looks real to life and that it looks like it might have been this product and this color that was physically in the shot from the beginning. But with that said, it all just takes a bit of work in Photoshop. Most things can be fixed. The question is, is it worth fixing it in post or just having it right from the beginning? I would always recommend to have it right in the beginning and then just touching it up, fixing it in post instead of just you know, doing everything in post. So get it right in camera and finesse in post. I believe that is all the time we've had in this session. I hope you learned something about retouching and how you can manipulate color to a certain extent and still keeping it real to life. And with that said, stay creative and I'll see you in the next one.